practice. I don't want it to happen again. I promise it will not happen again. Can help? When do you guys I have your offering. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Julie, pay attention. Thank you. All right. We are so glad you're here today. And one thing I'd like for you to do is we're going to raffle this off because the owner's not here this morning. Uh, no, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, yeah, some of you got excited about that. I'd like for every one of you to stand up, if you, if you can, and go grab somebody's hand and tell them you're glad they're here today. Would you do that? Well, we are so glad you're here today with us. We want you to have a good time. You can be seated for now. I just wanted to get up, and some of you just look like you already fell asleep. We haven't got started yet. So, uh, all right. We're going to start with some announcements real quick. Don't forget it's announcements. Wake up, Natalie. It's not time to go to sleep yet. All right. Uh, Operation Christmas Child, it's the zoo out there. There's a, 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 a cage you can put in your stuffed animals for that for the next couple weeks. Make sure you do that. Uh, Manhattan Christian College, Kevin Foster will be here uh, tonight at 5 o'clock down at the Rock. And uh, he's a recruiter for um, um, Manhattan Christian College. Cabbage Ball. How many of you have played Cabbage Ball last year? Mush ball, all that stuff. All right, some of you need to sign up on a team. We got uh, sign up out there. Sign up today. If you don't have a team, sign up and we'll put you on a team. Uh, Lucas Melvin started crying because no one wants to be on his team. He's that terrible at every sport. He's so terrible he had to become a coach because he couldn't play very well. So that's why I'm preaching. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, I'm going to let that slide because it's evaluation month and I want to keep my job. All right. It's Youth Sunday, May 1st, and the youth will be in charge next week. Come on back for that. Uh, senior banquet is May 1st at 6 p.m. as well. Uh, make sure you got everything. If you have any questions, call the office. May 5th is uh, National Day of Prayer. The Minister Alliance is putting on at noon to 1 o'clock at The Rock. It's an hour long. You come in and pray as long as you want and leave when you want. Uh, we're not going to tell you what to pray for or who to pray for. Just come in, pray, and leave. And then also our church is going to put on something that evening. We're trying to hopefully do it down at the park in the evening. Uh, Lori's garage sale is Friday, May 6th and Saturday, May 7th. Proceeds all go to Lori's place. Uh, where did... There's Tyler. Make it quick, Tyler. All right. And there's some real jack wagons in this church. We've got a couple right here. I mean, never a dull day. Um, just to touch on the fish fry a little bit, it's in a couple weeks. Um, so we just ask that people get signed up uh, pretty soon. It's out there on the Welcome Center, kind of by the, the office. Um, just to touch on that a little bit, there are um, there is a donor to pick up the tab on the people um, that maybe don't have a park pass to get out to the lake in the pavilion so but what you have to do is get into the uh, just pull into the park office and just get a it's a special permit thing for the day and uh, coming down to the pavilion we're gonna hopefully feed people around six and uh, but before that hopefully around noon um, we're hoping to take kids fishing um, adults um, all that so we're gonna have people out on the shoreline I'm gonna hopefully have my boat if we can get the wind to maybe calm down a little bit and there'll be a couple other boats, um, so if a kid wants to go fishing, um, we'll, we'll make that happen for him one way or the other. A um, couple other things. Uh, we do want a good count on, on that, so please sign up because we need to know how much fish we, we need to fry up. So um, please utilize that. Um, 
And then the next column over is uh, what side will you bring? And I don't want you to feel obligated to bring a side for that. So um, just if you don't want to bring anything, don't bring nothing. But the way I worded it was because we don't want 15 people to bring baked beans. We want a kind of a variety of something. So that way you can kind of go through the column and you can look and see what, if you are interested in helping out with that, then you'll kind of have an idea maybe what you want to make. Um, bring a lawn chair and we'll have some fish and some fellowship. So any questions, I'll be out there after church and we'll go from there. All right. Is that long? Nope, you did good. You did good. I asked him if he'd fillet my fish for me, and he said, well, you got two hand, a hand and a half, so he wouldn't do mine. Yeah, that's what he said. I mean, all right, it's a time to register for camp. Uh, you go to the website and register your kids there, and our church does pay a portion of that when they go. Uh, so if you have any trouble with that, you can call the office, and they can walk you through that. Uh, CIY, you can get final pricing uh, and see how much you still owe if your kid is going on the CIY trip. And that is our group. I'm the only one out of three there. For some reason, Evan didn't make it today. I don't know what, I don't know what he was doing. Does anybody know what he did? Something. I guess he got sick or injured or something. Uh, so he got married yesterday. Some of you are looking confused. So he got married there. Yeah. So it was good. And Garrett's out of town today. So um, we're getting into our scripture reading. But before we do that, and um, we're going in time of this, uh, I was looking over the report, and we've got several like 40-some thousand acres just on this last fire. But when you go online to look, the United States has fires in Texas, North Carolina, New Mexico, Arizona. That's all over the United States. And so our community's suffering with this, but there's a lot of people suffering with this. And, man, I'd love to go on a ride today. I'm, I'm wanting to go on a ride, but I'd be awful tickled pink if we got rained out today. So I'd be okay with that. So would you please stand, and we're going to have a moment of prayer for the fires, and then I'm going to read the scripture. Father, as we stand here right now, we do ask and beg that you will protect those that are fighting the fire still, but also, Father, we pray for those that have lost loved ones in this and the tragedies of the loss they feel of their property. And, Father, we just pray that uh, we do pray for rain. And, Father, we pray that you'll just uh, bring such a rain that it'll stop these fires but also renourish and plenish our ground that we have here today, Father. A lot of our community, and it, it depends on this rain coming in. So please, Father, bring forth that rain. And we pray also as we ride today that you'll keep the winds down and so that uh, we'll be safe. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through anything else, then Christ died for nothing. Join us in worship today. I was buried in me, my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I made. was breathing the night alive. All my failures I try to
Tim Smith, this is my cousin. Right on! I'm going to hold him down for an extra few minutes. <laughs> and then he can hold me down. Yeah, we're going. All right, Tim, I'm going to do the same thing. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Yes, I do. And that he died and was buried and rose again for the forgiveness of our sins? Yes, I do. All right. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One more. My brother John Rains, uh, he's been coming to our Bible study uh, starting up this year, and I uh, got to know him and his family really well, and just uh, this commitment is uh, one of the best decisions you, a guy can make for his life and his family, uh, that we have a chance at eternity with the Almighty Father. So, uh, John, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Yes. That he died, rose, and... Uh, took care of all the burdens and all the sins for our lives. Yes. Okay, John, based on your confession, here we go. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, would you all stand with us again and continue this time of worship?
sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Amen. You can all be seated now. morning. Glad to see so many of you here. We've got a terrific amount of guests. A lot of you I know, but a lot of you I don't know, and we hope every one of you is feeling welcome here. I want you to leave here feeling blessed and maybe drawn closer to the Lord. Roger, if we make this any more memorable than it's already been, we've got our work cut out for us. Uh, I dismissed this thought of a, of a communion meditation earlier because I wanted to share a tradition that I grew up with in the Brethren Church and I got to thinking it's too, uh, too informational and not enough inspirational. And then when we had a chance to participate in Enrique's celebration of Passover here on Friday before Easter, I thought, well, tradition is pretty important. Maybe it'd be all right if I did go ahead and share it with you. And then it got clinched this week uh, reading the Rooted book the elders have read it, and they know that uh, it dwelled on the importance of different ceremonies, and two of the main ones being baptism and communion. <clears throat> and I really, what brought this to mind was, what I'm going to share with you is a very humbling tradition that we went through out there in our little church. And we're supposed to humble ourselves before we take communion on Sunday morning. And I know we try, we do our best, and I hope the rest of you aren't as guilty as I am, but there's been mornings when the server got to my seat that I find my mind has wandered and I'm thinking about something a lot less important than the sacraments that we're going to be taking. So let me share this illustration with you on humility and hope that it makes us more sincere and more dedicated in taking communion. <clears throat> I grew up in the little Maple Grove Brethren Church northwest of town. My brother Doug and my sisters uh, went out there, and I've got a sister that lives here in town that's still a faithful attendee. And it, they're a quiet, reserved people. Probably 60 years ago, more so, this, this illustration that I'm sharing with you, probably 60 years ago, more uh, quiet and peaceful than any of us are now. But there's a scripture in 1 Thessalonians that says, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and work with your hands. And what about Jim and Carolyn? You'll agree with that's the way those people are. Uh, you filled our pulpit several times. Did you ever take part in the love feast? I can't remember. Anyway, <clears throat> at Maple Grove, we didn't have communion on a weekly basis like we do here. There were five or six times during the year we would have what we called brief communion, which was the cup and the bread. <clears throat> but twice a year there was a special event, and we called it full communion or love feast. And that's what I share, want to share with you about. Now, I feel like our brethren church, it was simply Church of the Brethren, I feel like they're a branch of the Reformed Brethren at Quinter. And... At an early age, I can remember elders from the Reformed Church at, at Quinter coming up and talking to us during business meetings about the district and what was going on in what we called the Brotherhood, and that was just because the communication is so much different than it is here today. But anyway, <clears throat> I feel like we're a branch of them, and I feel like in turn they're a branch of the Dunkard Brethren. And if you go to Walmart at Hayes or Colby or any towns around here today, you're liable to see the Dunkard truck and dunkard brethren we actually weren't <laughs> the dunkard brethren you can always tell them because of their traditional dress you know and they're quietly going around about their business and even today i've got some acquaintances they they're self-sustaining and they bring their used dairy cows to the sales i work at and i like to visit with those people they're quiet and for some reason you go in the sale barn and there's always room to sit beside them people shy away from you if you dress different, right? But anyway, uh, <clears throat> I just feel like uh, 
the tradition of the love feast was an important part of our lives growing up. And I don't know about the preparation for this because I was too young to be a part of it, but I'm sure that like two or three dedicated couples from our community would gather at the church basement and it would be in the spring of the year. It would always be on Monday, Thursday, the Thursday before Easter. And the men would arrange the tables in our basement, which is designed very similar to the one here at the Christian church, only probably on a smaller scale. There'd be a row of tables on each side of the room, probably set out 10, 10 feet or so from the wall. And our congregation was small enough that you could sit enough chairs on the inside of that row so you would be, your back would be face, would be towards the center of the room while you ate. Anyway, the table's prepared. The ladies have been all afternoon cooking uh, beef and broth. My brother Doug said he was too young to participate in the love feast, but he remembers the beef and broth still. Anyway, <clears throat> when the time came for the love feast to start, the beef and broth was brought to the tables. Oh, I forgot to tell you, we're segregated out there. We have men on one side of the room, ladies on the other, and you'll understand why in a minute. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> you find a place at the table, you quietly sit there while the blessing is asked, and then you didn't have a plate in front of you, you had a soup bowl. And you'd take a slice of bread that was on plates available at the table, put your bread in the bottom of your soup bowl, the beef and the broth was passed, and you took the desired amount that you wanted, put on your bread, and it became soggy, of course, and it was what we called sog. But anyway, you share in the meal quietly. And then when the meal's over, <clears throat> there would be scripture read. There would be a song started by our song leader, worshipful hymns, but the songs went on all during the love feast. Now, there'd be a leader at the end of the men's table and the ladies' table that would stand up. There would be a folded linen apron on the end of the table. They'd put this apron on, and it covered you from below your neck to below your knees. And they'd take a porcelain pitcher, just like the picture you'd see in pictures of the Last Supper. <clears throat> they'd pour a desired amount of water into a basin that sat on the floor at the end of the table. While they're doing this, the person next in line to them has turned a chair around, so now they're facing the center of the room and they remove their shoes and their socks. The person with the apron and the basin kneels in front of that person. I'm sorry, it's been 60 years. Anyway, they would pick up a person's, the person's foot, gently place it in the basin, rub it with your bare hands, <clears throat> gently lift it into your lap, and dry it with the tail of the apron. We'd repeat this with the other foot, <clears throat> when that foot is sufficiently dry, the two parties would stand, <clears throat> excuse me, a handshake is exchanged, and a gentle kiss on the cheek, and it goes on down the line then. The person that just had their feet washed puts the apron on. He washes the feet of the next person. When they get to the end of the line, the very last person puts the apron on, comes back to the head of that table and washes the feet of the leader that had started it. And maybe it's because I was like 17 years old. I'm not sure of it, man. When you've had your feet washed and you've washed the feet of a respected person in your community. There's something special. Uh, Paula joined in with us after we were married, and she says, too, that it's the most humbling experience you can have. Sorry, folks, but that's the way I am. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to share with you a very short thing, and I do have notes for this, <clears throat> because it was in the devotion last Sunday morning, and it's very few words, but it speaks volume. <clears throat> it was in the upper room, and this is what an author wrote. I've read about the cross of Christ and what it means. I believe it and I confess it. But the more I reflect on that sacrifice, the more sure I am that I will never fully comprehend this act 
of incredible love and amazing grace. Let's pray. Father, we come to you so thankful for reminders of what this communion means, the sacrifice your son gave on the cross and the promise of eternal life that we've received. All over the world there are churches that have this these words inscribed that we see on our communion table, this do in remembrance of me. And this week, the author, one of the authors of Rooted explained why we have these words there. It says, because we're human and we tend to forget. So Lord, help us never to forget the importance of these sacraments that we're about to take. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen.
Will you pray with me for the offering, please? Lord, uh, we come to you this morning um, with open minds and open hearts. And we pray that you keep us humble, as Norman illustrated for us of what you did in the book of John, and it talks about it there, of Jesus washing his disciples' feet and the illustration that uh, it's about humility and about serving others and loving others. Uh, Lord, we pray for this offering. We lift it up to you, and we pray that uh, our first fruits are, are given to you to further the kingdom of God. And it's in your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. No kids quest today, but there is extended session, so if you've got little kids, you can take them on out. So we have a guest today, and that's Roger Cooper, and I'm not going to steal any of his thunder. How many of you know Roger Cooper? 
All right, how many of you Roger Cooper owes you money? <laughs> uh, okay, Roger, come on up here, will you? Welcome in today. I appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Oh, I love it. It's loud. Because I'm uh, challenged with my hearing, so this is good. Um, this is my story. This is my song. I appreciated Norman sharing about uh, the Church of the Brethren and their connection there. And when I was, uh, short story here, that is a picture of my wife and I when we were living in Wichita and part of a big church down there called Hope Community Church and they had a big motorcycle rally every year and we'd have 2,000 people show up. It was an amazing time. And uh, that, that motorcycle is not mine. <laughs> people say, wow, how could you afford that? I couldn't. I borrowed it from a buddy. And uh, he paid for it, and I rode it. It was great. I loved it. It was, uh, it was a win-win for me. All, all that to say that this picture was used when I was pastoring a church of the brethren down in St. John, Kansas. Now, here I am, that guy, long hair, hippie from the 60s, peace and love, and uh, going to Eden Valley Church of the Brother, and they asked me to come and serve for a, a couple weeks, which meant two years later. But the first thing we did, I said, I come from Wichita or from that area, from our church that had a huge motorcycle emphasis. I mean, we had motorcycle parking, and we had bikes all over the place all the time, which was great. Uh, a bunch of us rode all over and went to Cassidy and, and uh, just all the, all the time. Anyway, the first thing I said I'd like to do coming into to being the pastor, I want to have a motorcycle rally. Church of the Brethren. Very conservative, like Norman said. Uh, older congregation, there was about 35 to 40 maybe, an older congregation. And I came riding in on my motorcycle, my wife and I, and uh, became the, the hippie biker preacher in town. So I said, we need to have a motorcycle rally. And they went, a what? I said, we need to have a biker rally. Why? Duh. Bikes. We got to have it. So they, bless their hearts, stepped up to the plate, and we had a rally called Rally at the Valley, Eden Valley Church of the Brother. And some of these uh, very reserved individuals that did not have a clue about motorcycle presence stepped up to the plate. They began to come together. We began to, to promote this. And I'd go to the, some of the outlaw clubs around the area down in oh, Pratt, Great Bend, uh, that, that neck of the woods, go to some of the clubs, go in with my ride in on my bike and, and uh, ask to permission to talk and share about what we were having. And, and uh, you know, gracious people that these bikers are. Bikers are a good bunch of folks. Can I have an amen, by the way? Okay, we go. Anyway, when we had the rally, we had guys showing up. Uh, it, it was a rainy, rainy day on a Sunday. We had 700 people show up, a little church of 35. But people pulled together because they believed in the gospel message being presented in a language that people understood. And when these bikers showed up, it was so fun. I saw a bunch of you guys that are here today rode in and braved the wind, and hopefully you'll, it'll calm down. But we had bikers showing up from all over, trikes, bikes, uh, <laughs> scooters. And we had them all coming in, shaved heads, hair down to here, no hair, tattoos. And at the end of that day, there was a major decision that was made by many people to make a commitment to Christ because they saw the gospel in action. They heard the gospel in a language that they understood. Because we talked about what God loves. He loves people that are real. He loves people that are real from the inside out. You can wear all this on the outside, but if it's not from the heart, then it doesn't really matter. Amen. We, uh, that little church within about 10 months' time grew from about 35 to about 150, 160 people. Because they found a place that they could come to and feel accepted. It was so fun. There was this one older gentleman. He was, he was a hard nut to crack. I'm telling you what. He was, he was Church of the Brethren, the epitome. He was the old school guy. But one Sunday morning, he was sitting there on the front row. Because you, you had to get there early 
to get a good seat because people, were, you know, the back seats were always getting full, but man, people started filling up the front ones, which was awesome. But this one Sunday morning, here was, his name was Adrian. It was Adrian sitting on the front row with his tie and his suit, always dressed up. And next to him was a buddy of mine, Pete, rode a trike, came in his leathers all the time. Shaved head, tattoos, just got out of prison, and him and Adrian were sitting there next to each other. When it get, came time to say, let's turn around and gr- greet somebody, you saw Adrian just reach out and hug this man. It was a family. It wasn't you and me. It was like us. That's what the scripture's about. That's what the Bible talks about. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is known of God and knows God. He that loves not doesn't know God, for God is love. One of the great things in my life that God has given us has been family relationships with people. When Nate asked, how many of you here know Roger? There was a lot of you that, that we, hi, We've, we have a long history. Some of us even actually like me. One of the neat things about coming home, and this is home, this is where I started, right here in this little church. We moved from Logan up here to uh, south of town in eighth grade and uh, started coming to church here. And I will never forget a precious man in my life that opened the scriptures to me right here in the basement. His name is Lyman Rao. And Lyman shared the word. And that word, it took root. It took a while for it to grow because I went through some tough times. But I remember this church and Pastor Darrell having such an impact in my life growing up, even though it didn't take and stick for the longest time until I actually after I got kicked out of college. Then Jesus became alive. But those words that were planted back in the day would not return void. And it would accomplish what it had been sent to do. This morning, I don't want to take a lot of time. I appreciated Norman sharing about the, the love feast, by the way. Thank you very much. Very Im, Im, important part of our heritage as a Church of the Brethren was. But I wanted to share a couple things. In Revelation, the book of Revelations, uh, do we have that on the slide there? Yes. Revelation 12, verse 10 and 11. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, let me get out of the way. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses him before our God day and night has been hurled down. What a great promise from the scriptures, knowing that that accuser that comes to us in our times when we think we're falling apart in our weakest times and he comes to accuse us, he's already been hurled down. He's been cast down. He's been put aside because of the cross that we celebrate on Easter, the resurrection. Because of that resurrection, he's been hurled down. No longer do we have to succumb to his accusations, but we can rise up above that because they triumph over him by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. That is the bottom line of where our life is at, because of the blood of Jesus. And then by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. We all have a testimony. We all have something to share. You know, I've heard said many times, I have a terrible past. We all have a past. I have a past. You can go down here to the courthouse and find mine. (laughs) Max Archer and I were really good friends for a long time, those of you that knew Max. We all have a past. That's just a given. But we all have a history. And that history is his story in our lives. Yeah, we might have a past. We might not be proud of. We might have done things, seen things, said things, experienced things that we have a past from. But we also have a history, and that past helps us to have a testimony. We have been given an opportunity to live our life on this side of eternity with Jesus And be able to share that with other people, like people shared with me, like you've shared with others and others have shared with you. 
we all have an opportunity to have our past erased, but his story brought to light in a way that's new and relevant and will touch lives. The history of Eden Valley Church was quite a, quite a history. The little Church of the Brethren, uh, and I'm, I'm, using, I'm bouncing off of you, Norman. Thank you, by the way. I appreciated that. I wasn't thinking about sharing anything, but that little church had quite a history. A, you know, a tiny congregation like Maple Grove out here. But it had a deep history and a heritage. This church here has a deep history and a heritage. Churches around this area have a deep history and a heritage, but we share that with other people because we believe in the God that raised that up. As I uh, stand up here this morning, I think about how the Lord has changed my life through the years. 50 years ago, March 19th, 1972, to be exact, was my day of, of a formal commitment to Christ, which I did not turn back from. March 19th, 1972, the word that was presented to me here growing up, but finally came to fruition in March of that year, a little tiny church down around the corner here, the Full Gospel Church or Cornerstone Church, I made a commitment to Christ that day. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. Fifty years ago, that happened. Fifty years ago, I met the love of my life who helped, helped, helped Jesus. Between her and Jesus, they kind of helped keep me on the path. My lovely bride of 50, almost 50 years, this year will be 50 years, I've been married. Is Gwen? Do we have a picture? Yes. Isn't she lovely? Isn't he so lucky to have her in her life? But you want to see what we looked like when we were first married, or first engaged? Well, that, yeah. <laughs> this is, some of you guys remember that kid, don't you? I, I, some of you uh, younger, older people here. When, when the Lord brought Gwen into my life, it helped hone my faith. It helped me become stronger in my walk with Christ. And through the, dec the decades that we've been married, I've been able to experience her Love and her prayers and her commitment to a God who says, for better or worse, it will get better. And it did. We're like two kids. I, I do a song uh, by Vince Gill, uh, Look at Us. You're as pretty as a picture. Look at you, or look at me, still crazy after all the, oh well, yeah, crazy over you after all these years. The testimony that we have is very important. Each of us have one. Each of us have an opportunity to begin to share that with other people. And I love, I love having a biker rally at the Christian church here. And I'm thankful. Dave Nickel, he called me and asked me to, to be a part of this. I wanted to share just a few things real quick. Um, music has always been a part of my life since I was back in the 60s playing at the stagecoach. I mean, you, a lot of you probably don't know what that is, but... From playing music down at the Stagecoach and the VFW and the Legion and the Eagles and the Silver Club. Remember the old Silver Club playing music over there? Um, a lot of the things that, that helped form me to this day because of what God had done in my life way back then. But I wanted to share something this morning. Um, that first slide said, this is my story. This is my song. I wanted to share my story with you just real briefly. Uh, it's not going to take too long. We'll be out of here by three. Should be. <laughs> this is my story. My life began in July of 1953 in a unique way. Unlike many children born in those days whose parents had the pleasure of seeing their children brought into this world in fine hospitals with doctors and nurses in attendance in all in a sterile delivery room with the comfort of air conditioning, my entrance into this world was quite different. In 1953, the Osborne County Hospital was undergoing building construction and renovation. Therefore, there were no birthing facilities. So, many of us who were born at that time were born, were delivered in quite a different surrounding. We were born in a nursing home. The temperature was a scorching 113 degrees that 29th day of July when I decided to arrive on the scene in a place called the Haven of Rest. 
That's like a cemetery thing. You know, I'm thinking, I, I, but anyway, it was born in the haven of rest. According to my parents, there was no air conditioning, merely fans to move the air. As Doc Hodson did his best to help my mom, it was a hard delivery. She was 95 pounds and I was 8, 15. The doctor slapped her and said, you'll never do this again. No, 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 no. As Doc Hodson did his best to help my mom, it was a hard delivery. I was a breech baby that had to be assisted. I basically backed into the world. Plus, when the delivery was complete, the cord was tightly wrapped around my neck, and I was dead. I was a blue baby. But thank God for good old country doctors who knew what to do in situations like that. According to my mom, he quickly loosened the cord, gave CPR, and mouth-to-mouth, and I began to breathe. Now, one might ask, why go into detail regarding your birth? Tell us about your music. My answer to that is this. I have to share. How, despite having three strikes against me, arriving into the world dead, backing into the world, and being born in a nursing home, God had a plan. And that plan revolves around this. Being able to share what he's done in our lives, the testimony, the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. My first recollection of how I loved music was when we would attend the Christian church in Osborne. And as a young child, I'd stand in the pews and listen to the people sing as a piano player would play. For the two years that I attended Osborne grade school, before we moved, my favorite time was when we would either sing songs or play those fun little instruments. Remember them? Those are Okay, maybe you don't. I remember them. I, I do. Uh, and it was instilling in me a, desire, a deep desire for music, a desire I did not realize until sometime in the future. Let's fast forward to the Christmas program, my fifth grade year in Logan. Since the teacher, Mrs. Lucille Romine, knew how much I loved to sing, she asked me to sing a solo. The song was, I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. When I finished, people clapped and cheered, and I was ecstatic. When I walked off the stage, Mrs. Romine gave me a big hug and told me how proud she was of me and that I would, should always sing, that it was a gift God had given me. Little did I know how her words would continue to resonate within me. Six decades later, here I am today, still singing. February 9th, 1964. Do you remember that day? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ed Sullivan Show. I want to introduce to you four lads from Liverpool, England, the Beatles. Do you, nobody else remembers. Okay, I am old. You know how to tell when you're getting old? My son told me this. Dad, you know how you're getting old? You tell when you're getting old? How's that? When you start your sentences with, I remember when. I remember 1964, a huge moment in my life. That evening on the Ed Sullivan Show, Ed introduced to his viewers four lads from England, the Beatles. As I watched them play, sang their songs, and observed the crowd's response on our black and white TV, square box with a round tube. I remember that. Yeah, okay. I'm just checking how old you are here. Uh, Something stirred deep within me, and I thought to myself, I want to do music just like then for the rest of my life. Thus, on that pivotal evening, my passion for music had been born, and the fire had been lit, and I loved it. Even at my young age, I began to be involved in every aspect of music. Vocal, band, theater became a driving force. Alan Hale and I, uh, you, know, you all know Alan, right? Yeah. Quiet, shy individual, long flowing hair back in the day. Alan and I, we played music together back in the day, and uh, that was part of that passion that was being stirred inside of us. We loved it, and he still does it today, and I still do it today. And it's part of who we are. It's a part of our makeup. It's part of that testimony. It's who we are. It's what God has done in our lives. From 1965 to 1971, I was able to sing and play drums in school, gigged with some local bands, formed my own band in 1969, performed in local talent shows for civic clubs and organizations, great opportunities to get a taste of what performing was like. Sidebar that's not in here. Two individuals in this community had such an impact in my life, not just because of what they did, but because of who they were. Doug Johnston and Dave Stewie. Two men that help not hone just a skill and a craft, 
but two men that imparted a presence that was so sweet and an encouragement to follow the dream, but they knew it was coming from the heart. And those two individuals helped form who I am today. I remember coming back one day after I'd been on the road and I came back home to Norton. And Dave had moved over into junior high and he was playing in the pet band or having the pet band at the old gymnasium. And I went there to see some kids playing and I sat behind Dave and I tapped him on, on the shoulder and I said, who has the best band? And he turned around and went, Stewie Doo. You remember that, guys? Stewie Doo. He turned around and he had this big grin and he said, I was just listening to you on the radio the other day. He said, I listened to one of your albums and he said, I heard you. I thought, I'm proud of the man that he became. Who had the best band? Stewie Doo. That helped form me. Anyway, go on. From 73 to 76, I had the opportunity to play guitar, drums, and be lead vocalist with a couple popular touring bands from the upper Midwest. Traveling the country in those tour buses was quite an experience as we performed hundreds of shows, concerts, festivals, fairs, and conventions during those years. For my wife and me as newlyweds, it was a wonderful three-year honeymoon filled with lots of great times and, and great memories. Fast forward to January 77 when the big break came. My wife and I took a winter vacation to Phoenix. We were living here at the time and uh, went to attend a church convention plus enjoy sunshine and warmth instead of the cold Kansas winter. While there, one of the coordinators asked if I'd uh, heard I sang and played, if I'd be able to do a couple numbers for the evening banquet. Of course, I accepted and thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to perform a rare honor for this small town Kansas boy from Norton. Afterward, a gentleman came up with his wife from Topeka and asked if I had an album. I humbly said I didn't, and he proceeded to say, I should get one. I should do one. I needed to have one. I said, well, that's great, but it costs a lot of money to produce, record, and release a record, and I didn't have the finances. And he said, that's okay. Money's no object. I will gladly pay for it. You have a gift that needs to be shared with the world. A huge thank you to Dr. Curtis and Virginia Nystrom for the help launch a recording career and performing career with 18 albums to credit, three on eight track. <laughs> I have a garage with some in it. If, you, if you'd like to buy an eight track, I'll make you real good. Or cassettes. I don't. Fast forward to now. I still get to play. I still get to share. I still get to have a chance to talk to people about what's truly important, and that's Jesus. I've been truly blessed to have lived my childhood dream to play music, to record, write, travel, and above all else, to allow my music to put a smile on somebody's face and a song in their heart. Suffice it to say, with humility and gratitude, from the moment I took my first breath at the haven of rest until this very day, I'm thankful to God for the gift of life and the gift of music and that my theme and the anthem of my life always has been and always will be, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. I have a, I happen to have a guitar with me. <laughs> Go figure. <coughs> I've had my guitar, this is, makes the 28th year I've had this guitar. It's gone with me all around the world, seen different countries, been to Nebraska, been to foreign countries too. Um, <laughs> This little guitar was a blessing, and I won't go into all the details, but uh, it was given to me 28 years ago, and to this day, it's never had an adjustment done on it. It stays in tune. I want to share a song with you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, mm, washed in his blood. This is my story. 
This is my song. Come on, sing with me, would you? Praising my Savior all the day long. And this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior, I'm happy, I'm blessed. I'm watching and waiting, I'm looking above, filled with His goodness. I'm lost in his love And this is my story This is my song I'm praising my Savior All the day long This is my story mm -hmm. This is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Won't you open the eyes of my heart? I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see I want to see you I want to see you Lord that's not just a song we sang and we've memorized and we sang by rote but it's a prayer we have opened the eyes of our heart that we might see you Lord thank you for giving us an opportunity to see you through all the elements that we do here at the church. Through the baptism today, Lord, thank you so much for humble, honest people that commit their lives to you and say, here I am, I surrender all. Thank you for our communion that we had this morning and reflecting on that, about how important it is to know that you sacrificed everything, that we might have everything. That your death certificate became our birth certificate. That we became alive because of you. Lord, as we sing that song, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. We want to see you high and lifted up in our lives individually, in our nation, in our communities, in everything we do, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Father, thank you again for this opportunity to gather together on Biker Sunday with all these amazing men and women that, that ride their bikes in, or, or like when I drove our Toyota. <laughs> that we show up here to honor you, no matter what we look on, on the outside, we're embraced by you in a great way. Thank you so much, Lord, for what you're doing in our life. Thank you for this wonderful church. Thank you for my roots and the people that had a foundation in my life to help get me to this point today, all these years later. 
So, Lord, it's with gratitude and, and humility. I say thank you for what you've done in our lives. Continue to work inside of us all that you need to do to make us the best us we can be for your glory, to where our testimony shines bright. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've not had the opportunity to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, this is the opportunity to do that. I want to thank Roger for coming up here and beautiful song, beautiful message. <clears throat> so, the one thing that you'll see is he was talking the passion. And passion comes from the Messiah. When you, when you finally know him and he becomes real to you, you cannot help but have passion in your heart. And uh, today I want to introduce you to my Savior. If you've not had that opportunity, I want you to do that now. I'm going to be on the ride. If some of you have some questions, we're going to come back. I think about 4.30 and meet at the Bullseye. And all of you are welcome to come. We've, uh, the Cox Farms donated a whole hog. Oh, by the way, thanks, Cox Farms. You didn't know that, but we appreciate it. It's amazing what you can pick up at midnight. <laughs> uh, but uh, please come in and share with us. Have a good time today. Please. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life as we stand and sing.
come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was falling, the precious blood of Jesus Christ will come to the altar, the As you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasures you found. God's people said, Amen. All right. If you're going on the ride, we have some hamburgers and chips and stuff for you in the basement so we can eat. And we're going to do a blessing of the bikes. If you want your bike blessed, we've got some guys that we've got some. We made our own stickers this year for that. It's from the Norton Christian Church Bike Blessing. So cool. And also, we're going to do a bug run if you want to. Uh, where's Dave at? Wave your hand, Dave. There's Dave. You look bald headed from here, Dave. I want you to know that. Um, how much are the stickers for the bug ride? What did he say? Free will. All right, so that's what he's going to do, and the money that we raise is going for Angel Tree to get some uh, kids Christmas this year, so we'd love to have you. We're going to close in a word of prayer, and then if you're riding on the bikes, uh, go downstairs and get in line for the food. We'll feed you, get you out, and get the ride going. All right, let's bow in prayer, shall we? Father in heaven, as we conclude this day, we thank you so much for Roger and his testimony. We thank you, Father, for coming here and, and what this church has meant for so many people. And Father, we pray that we can continue to change lives and that people can see who you are through our lives. Father, we want to once again want to pray for the fires that we have and also for our community as our community is enduring some losses. And Father, we just know that this world's going to be tough. You told us that, but you said take heart because I'll be there with you every step of the way. Thank you, Father, for your desire to be with us and may we desire to be with you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And all of God's children said, Amen. You called my name.